Hello and um, I welcome you to uh, the webinar, special webinar from JFT Brokers, exclusively for JFT Brokers, how to trade the market opening of the US markets. So um, some of you uh, might have seen what's going on right now in the uh, European equity indices, especially the DAX. Um, some of you might have um, seen my, my uh, um, DAX long or short, that was in the morning um, at 7.20 a.m. GMT and uh, there I formulated a short setup uh, with a, uh, yeah, well to some it might have seen, uh, it's, it seemed, probably seemed a little too aggressive here but I, I, I um, said well, um, first of all the thing is that, that we, are, we are aiming uh, probably to hold this position a little longer so uh, in fact so far it works re out really really well so the market is, is dropping like a stone Drop below a very very important number, 12,500 points, and uh, crashed through 12,500 here um, in no time. Attacked or rallied the region around 12,400 points. And very interesting to note here uh, that the U.S. equity markets are very stable compared to what we get to see here in the DAX. So this is the red candle of the DAX. So uh, from the highs, which were somewhere around 12,700 points, down to the lows. Uh, we nearly saw, oh, this is a 330-point 300, uh, trading range. So let's have a look here at the, at the previous range. And uh, this is the, where is it? Um, daily high, daily low. So here's the daily high, 734. And here's the low. So as you can see, that's more than 300 points. Um, and now the thing is, um, although I'm somehow a little... Yeah, frustrated is the wrong word because it's part of the game and and uh, I, I knew this already way before since if you're trading the markets for a quite a while um, as I do so for nearly over over 10 years um, you, you just get a feeling of um, how things will happen and sometimes you get lucky and those uh, spots here but um, sometimes you don't and uh, what do I mean by that? It's very easy. So I was I was um, pretty sure that one day there will be a drop, and uh, if I'm lucky, I'm in the market and I just profit from it, um, probably probably enormously. And um, yeah, sometimes well, you just stand at the sideline and you just uh, see the market dropping here like a stone as it did here. So it doesn't probably look um, so so huge this drop, but it's definitely a huge drop. So this candle alone here was nearly 100 points in uh, five minutes now. And this is uh, the, the whole market range, as you can see here, the previous five day trading range respectively here, respectively here the uh, 10 and 20 day average trading range. Um, that was somewhere around 115, 116 points. So seeing a candle, a five minute candle, uh, with uh, um, a 100 point difference here from high to low, that's uh, the average trading range of, of uh, the last 10 respectively 20 days so it's a special day and unfortunately um, I'm, I'm not positioned but probably it's it's not too late yet since right now and by the way we're talking about the US market opening soon after this so um, in fact those two markets coincide or um, um, uh, correlate really strong in my view on them correlates really strong with each other because I'm a little I'm not sure I don't know if I should buy this what, what's happening right here in the DAX. So not buying in terms of going long, but buy what's happening here. So we're dropping 300 points in the European markets. It's not just the DAX, but also the Euro stocks. While the DAX still has some room here on the downside to close this, this uh, let's call it Macron gap. Um, for example, the Euro stocks, where do we have it here? Closed half of it already here, as you can see. And it's also dropping like a stone. I mean, this is this is a huge move from the highs to the lows. Um, we're talking about, yeah, nearly 100 points here too, uh, which which is in fact which is a big 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 move. It's definitely something you you have to to see like that. I mean, we're talking about a drop of 100 points at an index which is uh, right now trading at 3,500 points. So. Um, this is a drop of nearly 3% and it's, it's huge, it's really it's a huge move, even though that's all just happening in the European markets. If you look at the Dow Jones, you just wonder, well, which volatility? 
look at this. I mean, the the, the high today uh, we had it at 20, 21,496. That was uh, the pre-high um, before the the spot market opened here. So the high here of the spot market is 12, 21,480. The low is 21,390. So so far we have a trading range of 19 points in the Dow Jones. Nothing happening here. So the market is the, the trading range is is less than half a percent um, um, of the of 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 the uh, um, um, uh, index here. Okay. Same thing in the S and P. So if you look at what's happening in the S and P, you see the market is obviously. Um, bottoming out a little. By the way, from this we probably will formulate a setup a little later, um, but we have time, plenty of time probably. And also here, as you can see, the daily highs 2,440 points, the lows 2,415, 15 point trading range. It's it's okay. I mean, um, we we know if you look here at at the average trading range of the last 10 respectively 20 trading days also last 5 trading days you can see that the average trading range here was around 14 to 16 points so 15 is nearly the whole range average range uh, oh, it's it's uh, that, that that's the range um, or the same size of the average trading range for the last 5, 10, respectively 20 trading days. So also here, volatility is obviously coming back. But what are we talking about in terms of volatility if you look here at the, uh, at the, at the VIX? So what we can do here is we can update the site. It's, it's delayed by 15 minutes, but it's below 11. Okay, we are going up. We we went below 9. That was before the uh, markets, the U.S. markets opened, but we are now... Okay, we are heading back above 10, um, and we're probably making it up to, to I don't know, 11, if, if the market keeps on uh, being under pressure. But all in all, U.S. markets are not excited about anything happening in Europe right now at all. So if I, on top of that, look at what's going on in the Japanese yen who pushed up to 113 today and is now giving back around, well, probably 15 pips, 50 pips. Uh, here, let's go to the intraday chart. Let's look what happened here. So usually what you get to see when, when there comes volatility in the markets, what you see is that a Japanese yen, start, Japanese yen starts to strengthen um, too. That has to do with the fact that people are scaling back on the carry trades here. So we're coming down from 112.91 to as low as 112.40. So meaning really 50 pips from the highs. If there was real risk aversion in the market, if there was real panic, and if people are, are looking for exits here and just dumping their positions, you definitely see different market moves in the Japanese yen and the currency markets, but also um, in, in the US equity markets, for example. So um, long thing short, what we see here in the DAX is enormous. It's huge compared to what happened the days before. It was expected, could have, you could expect, it, expect this here um, since we knew that the region around 12,500 points was very, very significant. You have a thin market environment and then things start to make sense here somehow. This has mainly to do with low liquidity, with, with thin, a, thin market a thin market environment. And probably this is just um, a short interruption of the overall uptrend, which still is in play. Even if this is not a good sign, you just don't want to see this market um, I'm falling below the last relative low here or at, at least um, shortly pushing or uh, spiking below it and then be bought back. Um, this is probably a first indication that the market starts to prepare for, for a bigger move down probably, volatility ahead, whatever. But all in all, we have to say that um, if, you, if you take into account what's happening in the US markets and if you take into account what's happening uh, in the currency markets, this move here on the downside is probably just that, short, sell off flash crash stop fishing move call it whatever you want but it's not the real deal and uh, meaning that we are now collapsing to new lows even though I have to say um, or no 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 let's let's put it that way um, right now people might wonder whether I plan to go short today probably in the decks so right now I don't plan to go short but Tomorrow morning, when the DAX opens, I will carefully watch what's happening here around the market open, and probably there will be a chance to short the DAX 
um, and it, or no, if the market really, if the DAX shows it's weak, or if 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 the Asian markets somehow show some weakness, this could result in the DAX then opening below 12,500 points. I mean, it's still a key um, support here, and this means that here I then look for short engagement based on the open range and probably trade the open range breakout with a target here around 12,070, 12,100 points. So that's right now what I'm looking for, but I'm not getting um, um, heavily excited right now or a start to be, to be impatient or something. I think it's a first good sign, volatility seems to come back, but nevertheless, if you look at the overall picture, be aware to consider this break here as the real deal, since it somehow looks as if if the DAX, respectively European markets, the Euro stocks, broke significant levels, but the US indices doesn't. And this is a sign that probably we have to wait for bigger moves here. Um, and that was just a short, let's call it blow on the downside, stop fishing, something like this. And from there, we move then higher, probably again towards the region around the current all-time highs around the region around 13,000 points in the DAX. The all-time highs are still in play in the U.S. equity markets too, I think. So if you look here, we are still trading around the current highs at 21,540 points, the current all-time highs in the Dow Jones. Same thing here for the S&P, where the all-time high is 2,400 and one second, 51, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 51, 50, 50, 50, 51, 52, somewhere here. So, and now the thing is, um, I told the German audience, uh, I had another webinar 30 minutes ago, I told the German audience, well, the same thing I already told you regarding the DAX and, and what I plan to do, and um, nevertheless, it's also uh, a market opening webinar around the US markets, and I told them if they plan to short the S&P short, um, then they should definitely don't sell this break here on the downside. So right now you can see here there's a small spike below the lows and I told them don't sell such a break to new lows short but instead wait for the following to happen, wait for a pullback um, and try to catch if you plan to go short at all, that's the thing. So once again the market does not really have any kind of risk aversion uh, or anxiety nervousness, excitement about um, bigger moves to come on the downside, panic. There's not nothing seen right now. So there's, there, you can't see anything like this in the markets right now. So this is something you have to take into account when considering going short. But if you consider going short, then I go for this region here between 2,437 um, to 2,439. So this is the region where I could imagine to go short again, or which region I would go short against if I plan to go short in the S&P right now. Even though I have to say, um, I'm, it's difficult. It's a difficult call since you have to remember um, the U.S. markets look strong. They really look strong. Look at what happened in the in the European markets. Look at what happened in the Euro stocks and the DAX and it seems as if the U.S. markets doesn't care at all. So they come back a little, yes, okay, 15 points here in the S&P, 100 points in the, in the Dow Jones. Um, but all in all, the markets are still very, very stable. And this is one reason you have to be really careful here when considering going short against those highs. Um, and um, yeah, so let's, let me just formulate here the setup for such a scenario. So you might wonder, the problem about this, by the way, is the following. Um, it's it's not the classic open range breakout strategy I usually prefer when trading uh, the S&P. So this is the usual strategy for the Dow Jones, S&PX, uh, SPX 500, also for the DAX. Um, you have to only change here the, uh, the, the, um, the time. But all in all, the setup is the same. Um, but what I just prepared here for you and what I just looked to present to you differed enormously from uh, from the from the pure open range breakout setup. So and this is something by the way I do. So the open range itself, so formulating a range between in this case of the US markets between 130 PM and 215 PM GMT. Um, sometimes I formulate a setup based on the open range. Sometimes as today for example, 
I use the open range only as kind of orientation. Where do we stand in the market? And um, what do you really want? What, what do I want to see? And in this case, um, what I what I just formulated, it's the following. So we can we can also go here to this chart. Um, probably here you can see it a little better. The red line here right now is also the high of the open range. As you can see here, there's a small red line that you have to you have it here and you have it here. So this is my my so-called breakout indicator. So what I do is. I have an indicator showing me the open range in a certain uh, in a certain um, 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 period here, which I can define. If I click here on this breakout indicator, um, you can you can type in uh, the time when a period begins, when a period ends, and where the box ends. And this is exactly what I do every day. Um, and here, as you can see, the market obviously went lower and. We would have been triggered here on the short side if we just trade the breakout out of this box here on the short side. But this is not what we do right here. But what we do is we play within the range with a significant region, which is or should can be seen here around the close from yesterday at um, 8 p.m. GMT. This is the deep blue line, and here or royal blue line, and here the turquoise line. This is the um, 1:30 p.m market open, the spot open, when Wall Street opens. So, and within these two lines, which are lying obviously within the, the open range, I'm now formulating the setup. So I use the open range and, and, and based on the open range, I try to find spots where I can position myself in with a positive and, and highly attractive risk reward. And this is right now what we're doing. So. Um, the, the, the overall setup here can be found here. Take a snapshot of it. Just just take it with you and 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 update not update it but 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 um, uh, um, reformulate it for your for your trading approach. See what works best for you. Um, but what I just presented to you here with the setup board, the setup board I will write down right now has nothing to do with the classic open range setup here. But in this case, I use the open range as kind of orientation. Where do we stand? And then I try to formulate based on two significant lines: the open and the close. The close of the day before, 10 p.m. GMT. Uh, no, 10 p.m. German time. So it's at, um, 8 p.m. GMT, and today's market open at 1:30. PM GMT. So those are the, the important lines. And as you can see, by the way, so I'm not working with, with, with any kind of formation or indicator or whatever. So I have an indicator here. I have the breakout indicator. I have the average daily range indicator. Okay. But I do not work with any kind of indicator like the RSI, MACD or something. But I work with, with lines which can be seen from everyone. So the close from yesterday and the open from today is um, is an objective line in the chart. It's an it's a line everyone can see. As everyone can see the daily high, the daily low, for example, and those are the key lines I look for in my trading. So um, the setup itself is based purely on on uh, on lines and on numbers, which everyone else can see, and based on this, where I expect a reaction to come then. And um, so yeah, let's come to the to the setup then here. One sec. So, we call it the ASPX 500 short setup, and um, here we go short, entry short, if at all. Once again, consider the fact European markets are weak, S&P, Dow Jones doesn't seem to care. If the market, by the way, now, and this is, but this is a hardcore, hardcore trade, uh, but if the market now drops again to the lows here, but it's not making new lows, and it's not breaking the lows from yesterday, lows from yesterday can be seen here with this green line, so this is the low from yesterday. If the market is not breaking below this, probably it's also very interesting to consider going going along against this level, and then bet on the, the market reverse most of those losses uh, which came from a from a bearish market opening. Meaning, so you could then consider, let's say, going long to th um, 4:30 with a stop could be slightly below the lows from yesterday. Even though I I prefer um, an ATR stop and a stop which is a little wider, giving giving the trade some more room to breathe. Meaning that I'd go for a stop here of let's say six points probably, probably five five to six points and then go go along against this level. But first of all, let's formulate the, the short setup and then we go for the for the for the for the long setup. Um, so if the market does not drop to this level again, four thirty 
what did I say, 7, 4, 39. And then we work with a stop, which is here at this level, which is above um, 444, 445, uh, depends on, on, your, on your personal preference. Um, what you can do here is uh, reduce the position size. So first of all, you, you say, this is the amount of money I'm willing to risk here. And then you say, okay, um, if I'm working with an entry here of, let's say, 437, and I work with a stop at 445, well, you have to, to uh, um, adapt the position size, uh, this and the, the, the way um, that it fits your, your risk you're willing to take then. Um, and then we say we want to work with a target of the lows. 2425. So here the green line. These are the lows. So what you're what we are aiming on is the following. Look at this here. So what we do is we go short in this region and then we want to get gonna see such a such a pullback here to these lows again. That's what we are betting on. Um, and so we have by the way I forgot to define the risk here, one second. So it's the risk, and the risk is uh, seven to eight points. And the target is somewhere between 12 to 14 points. As you can see, the risk reward is at least, yes, at least uh, bigger 1 to 1 1.5. So that's at least the, the risk reward you're getting. So if you're taking 8 points risk and, and you just uh, go for a 12 points chance, uh, it's 1.5 to 1. Or, uh, yeah. Um, so that's it. That's it on, on, on this side, so the short side. But also, as already said, even though this is uh, this is purely discre discretionary, but I could imagine this to work out too from a risk-reward perspective. It looks attractive. So what we could do is the following. One second. Let's go here. So what we can also do is probably we drop again to those lows. But if the market is not making it below the lows here, but stabilizing above this, well, we could say let's try to get to see a move back to the um, spot open here, probably to the highs from yesterday. Not sure, um, probably, but this is the region we are we are aiming on. And then, um, if we if you plan to 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 trade the S and P today this way, um, well, obviously, if we go long against, I don't know, yeah, four twenty six probably. Something. Oh, we have to. Oh, by I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So the thing is. Uh, this is this is a problem here. So we're working with the JFD trading platform. So I'm not sure what's the reason for. Oh, I'm, okay. I'm sorry. So what I did here was I worked not with the uh, um, 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 spot market, so cash, the S&P cash, but with the with the future. So um, JFD is offering also CFDs on the future too. But there's a difference between the future and the cash market, obviously. So uh, you have to adapt it accordingly. Okay. Um, in this case, we're talking then about 440 to 440, 42 here, um, while the lows are at 428 here. So, um, but but you can easily adapt this. The numbers stay the same. You just you just have to uh, you just have to 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 uh, change those numbers here. Uh, but probably not the worst thing. So, if you're trading in JFD account here, uh, whatever broker you might trade with. Um, hopefully with JFD, but, but um, there there is a difference sometimes um, um, when it comes to those uh, prices here. That has something to do with the liquidity provider in the background. Or in case of JFD, it's the liquidity provider. Sometimes, so JFD does not have a, um, a market making license. So meaning, if you're trading with JFD, there is no uh, conflict of interest here. But um, uh, JFD has external liquidity providers offering you liquidity. You can trade on them. And oh yes, great. Um. Uh, 
Hello, hello. So I'm not sure. Um, can you hear me? Okay, so, hello, 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 hello. Can you hear me? Could you just just give me give me a short? Uh, could you just give me a short? Um, okay, great. Die Sprachübertragung beginnt jetzt. Alle Teilnehmer befinden sich im Zuhörermodus. Okay, hello. Can you can you hear me again? I'm really sorry. I just lost my internet connection. I just lost my internet connection, so um, I just was a little irritated um, after after uh, seeing uh, the the quotes freezing here. But um, I think, yeah, I'm back again. Okay, I'm sorry, <laughs> but I didn't say so much uh, so much uh, more. Only, the only thing or last thing I said was that we have to um, um, adapt those uh, those those um, uh, levels here, probably, since there's an uh, there there's a difference between you can see it here, US 500 cash. And what I'm using here, and this is the S&P 500 stock, in, stock, stock index future. So, um, and this is the thing. So, if you're trading with JFD, you have liquidity providers, external ones, um, who are giving you the liquidity you can trade on. Um, in case of other brokers, um, it might be that they're trading against you. If they are trading against you, or they're giving you the liquidity you can trade on, well, um, it could be that the quotes differ here. And if they differ, well, you have to adapt accordingly. Um, so, do two blue lines here. This is the 8 p.m. Uh, uh, sorry, or it's the last last tick here um, at uh, yesterday at uh, 10. I'm sorry, 8 p.m. GMT, and this is the first at 1:30 p.m. GMT. So these are the two blue lines, and then just see where where they are, and then adapt the, the the setup accordingly. But usually it shouldn't be such a such a big deal here to do this. Um, and now the second setup. Se second setup, I've already um, I'm I'm showing it here. So the drop then to those lows again. Let's 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 keep on working with with this um, 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 future indication here. Um, so I'd, I'd go for for an entry somewhere somewhere here probably, 27. Probably let's let's see. I, I mean, um, I, I wouldn't buy the dip to this region, but see what happens here. If the market doesn't make it lower, I'd probably um, 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 enter the market very discretionary. And um, let's let's suppose we're we're somewhere doing it here, somewhere around 27. So which stop do we work with? Um, I wouldn't put it st the stop too tight below here uh, the the lows. I, I would avoid this, but instead I would look at the ATR, which is currently at two, and somewhere working with a stop and the risk of five points. So five to six points. So meaning the stop is somewhere between 421 to 422. So that the risk is five to six points, and uh, then the target is obviously this range which we are willing to go short against so 437 to 439 here this region and um, meaning that we get a chance that we get a chance here a reward of 10 to 12 points and showing obviously that the risk reward is somewhere we're near two, two to one. So this is another setup we could we could uh, look for. And so far, by the way, if I look at what what the U.S. equity markets are doing, um, it seems as if there is no real willingness to to see an aggressive attack here at those lows. So currently, the market is really, yeah, it's it's calm. It's really calm. So it's no risk off or something. Uh, and this is something which which should should be watched carefully here. So if the market now attaches these levels, okay, fine, but it doesn't break through. Um, this could be a good chance to go aggressively long against this level then and see um, a pullback towards here the blue, the deep blue, or respectively the turquoise line. Um, yeah, and so uh, so that's that's it um, on the on the setup side. So. Uh, as, as already said here, adapt accordingly to the um, um, uh, price levels 
um, your broker is giving you respectively um, depending on the market you're trading. So S&P 500 stock index future differs from, for example, the cash uh, market here, which I have here. So there's the difference coming from. Um, and uh, yeah, so in fact, that's it. Um, that's that's uh, how you can formulate a trading setup. Um, the thing is now, as already said, let's see how things are going in the DAX here. So obviously the market, the DAX is not, uh, again, pushing a little lower. Um, there's also something, uh, some, it's very interesting, that, that sometimes it doesn't happen, but it's more often the case that usually the U.S. markets, if they start to stabilize, are capable of pushing the DAX higher. So it could be that we get to see similar setup here in the, uh, in the DAX, while I definitely prefer the more liquid market, in this case, Dow Jones or the S&P. But in case of the DAX, it could be that we, what we get to see another push to those lows here. The market is not making it below the lows and then starting to reverse, sometimes heavily, and pushing back above 12,500 points. The risk reward could be enormously. Um, if you just look at the fact that, that if you go, go long against this level here and the market pushes back towards 12,500, probably 550 points, the chance you could get here, and uh, by the way, not very spectacular market environment since if liquidity dries out, uh, the market could drift higher into the next trading hours, well, then there's, there's probably a good chance uh, to get to see, yeah, such a re rebound here, which is giving you odds which are, no, not odds, but, but the risk reward, which is getting uh, really attractive and far bigger than two to one, um, and yeah, so uh, definitely, definitely worth watching. While I prefer to uh, look right now until 8 p.m. GMT uh, at the U.S. equity markets and uh, leave the DAX, um, yeah, leave the DAX at the sideline right now, but looking carefully at uh, how things are going then into the market opening tomorrow. Um, yeah, and just let's see. I mean, there's still, and this is the thing, there's still much room on the downside. If this is a sustainable break, then we could easily get to see another 300-point dip here tomorrow into the weekly close. So could get really, really ugly for the bulls into the weekly close. On the other hand, I mean, yeah, volatility was really low for a long time. So rather sooner or later, there had to be expected such a breakdown and then bigger moves on the downside. But be aware of cognitive biases here. That's uh, something definitely worth to, to consider. Um, be really aware of that since um, we haven't seen bigger moves here for a long time. And this means that this looks boom. It looks huge what we get to see here, even though it's just normal. And on top of that, put this in relation to the strength in the Dow Jones, for example. Stabilizing here, okay, and now dropping a little lower towards the, the daily lows, but still being lower 100 points from the from the spot highs here. Same thing for the S&P. So uh, it's not real weakness. It's not real weakness we get to see here. And now, well, it's getting interesting. So look at this. So uh, let's just see whether the market pushes lower or not. If it doesn't, well, then the second scenario is probably the most interesting one here. And um, so, well, probably test it. Just test it with a, with a demo account. And um, if you have any questions on the on the setup, then shoot me a mail or contact me via Twitter. Um, if you want, we can also uh, make this, this setup here and the outcome a topic then in the next um, uh, event together. Uh, so, well, first chance tomorrow, morning meeting, 9.30 a.m. GMT. And, um, yeah, so that's it for my end. I hope you enjoyed uh, this, this webinar. And just let's see how things are going here. Um, and uh, then talk to you again tomorrow into the weekly close, uh, 9.30 a.m. GMT. Um, any questions, please let me know. Feel free to contact me. And, um, and uh, yeah, so that's it from mine. Have a nice evening. Uh, happy trading. Watch your stops. See you and bye-bye.